Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode, I've decided that I want to try and make the landing, and after we see whether this works out or not, I'm going to try and resolve some of the junk I have in near-Earth orbit. So, that is the plan. I've decided to try and land it because, uh, well, someone uh, pointed out in the comments that even if I did use the lander as intended, there was a problem in that uh, the antenna, I would have no way of extending it, and that is correct. I really don't have any way of extending this antenna. So if I tried to keep this in orbit as a communication device and launch another one of these, it wouldn't work as intended anyway. So, so that's sort of important. And uh, anyway, I want to uh, see if this works out and gather more data on what the proper altitude for aero braking around EVE slash uh, Venus is. So that's the plan. So we're going to figure out, uh, let's say, you know, we got into orbit normally around Venus and we wanted to, okay, we wanted to make sure that we landed. What, what sort of... Uh, what sort of periapsis would we need, right? I mean, let's say we did create a lander and we started out in some sort of eccentric orbit like this. What would the right uh, aerobraking periapsis be so that we don't fry ourselves? And, you know, uh, given the previous lander experience, uh, it shouldn't be too bad, but we don't have a heat shield, remember that, and so that's the key here. Can we manage it without a heat shield? And... Uh, of course, the eccentricity of our orbit uh, does make things a little bit interesting. And what I figure is, as long as we're on this side of the planet and landing here, it's going to be dark, unfortunately. But at least we'll be in communication with Earth, and that's the plan. So, that's what I'm trying to do here. Right, so that, that has us at a periapsis that looks good. I think I will dip it to... Hmm. Two thirty... Well, let, let's try the same sort of thing. 228, how about? We seem to break quite a lot at uh, this altitude. So we'll try it again and see if that'll bring us down properly or not. We could try and uh, go around twice. No, no harm in that, really. If we want to go high, but uh, let's try and go down on one orbit. So that's the plan, and we'll see if it works. Okay, and uh, at periapsis we should be we should be a able to still communicate. Let's see. That'll be better. We'll be sending the signal ahead of time anyway. Hmm, well, it's all an experiment as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so, node. We've still got RCS on, so that's firing using a lot of this stuff. Wow. It's got to take that much delta V to bring an orbit down? No way. What the heck is it? What is Smart ASS doing? Oh, this looks weird. Okay, um... I've uh, decided to turn off RCS because this is just leaking away. Huh. Why would it take this much Delta V? I guess it would, huh? I mean, if you imagine the moon out here... Yeah, I guess I underestimate how much Delta V it would take to do this manually. Hmm. That's a bit of a problem. 
We only have 870 in this stage. And declining because the RCS keeps firing. What is... why is Smart ASS so... uncapable of... incapable of uh, orienting us properly? continually burning this RCS. Okay, just stop. So, what we're gonna do is we're going to actually burn that apoapsis and bring our periapsis down into the atmosphere slightly. And then go around a few times. Okay, so we're gonna head in at uh, 303 kilometers. Let's try for that. Did I have a reaction wheel on here? Sorry, it's it's been a week since I've messed with this one. Doesn't look like it. So we'll need to have RCS, but I'm turning it off here, so that's annoying. Okay, let's get to these uh, commands. Okay, well, it looks like it looks like for some reason even flight computer seems to be firing the RCS in all directions instead of just the one that I want. So, we have a problem. Hmm. I wonder what is going on with this. Oh, this is a mess. Seems like I have all four ports that I originally had, so... What is with all this? You know? This is a question. Maybe, maybe I need to send some stuff down here. Fuel I mean. I wonder how quickly fuel can transfer. Uh, now it's those RCS units. Maybe they'll be better off. So, fuel is not affected by the signal delay. I can transfer it however I want. But uh, this is... This is not particularly efficient either. <laughs> It's still firing the RCS ports in all directions. I was wondering whether the fact that these were on a, a slanted surface for some reason confused it, but no, no, that was not what confused it. Incidentally, the center mass should be around here somewhere. Well, maybe not anymore. Maybe this this tank here is unbalancing it a little bit, but then, no, it'd still be right around here, I think. We're probably not going to be using the fuel up here now, so I'm going to send that down into this tank. Even though right now that just means that it's going to be used for RCS burning. Okay, that's close enough. Darn it, I can't take any more of this RCS stuff going on. We'll uh, use the gimbling on the engine to get the rest of the way through. All right, so a decent amount before the maneuver node, of course, we need to stop and then execute. Okay, here we go. Okay, come on, turn, turn. Ah, oh, darn. Well, it's not too bad, actually. It's just a slight inclination change as a result and we're not going to burn quite enough. 
should leave us drifting a bit and then I'm gonna burn another 41 okay so here's a little bit of a trick now got a time warp close to the retrograde marker not quite there yet but that's alright because of what I'm gonna do so now it's gonna and I'm gonna send a prograde signal uh, it's probably too late I should have done that earlier I want the uh, engine gimbling to well let's yeah I'm gonna have uh, smart ASS try and reorient me prograde oh darn the periapsis is too low but I think we're still drifting so that's good but what I want to do is have us drift towards prograde and that's fine because that's the way we're gonna lift the periapsis properly this is too much okay so let's see if if I can still use RCS nope nope RCS is on delay or it might not even work at all I issued a uh, what you call it uh, a yaw command it's a yaw command and uh, it's not yawing the keyboard controls for RCS also don't work right now but we're still drifting towards the prograde marker thanks to that little bit where the the flight computer did a bunch of bursts so we'll line up eventually but what that means is I still have to rely on flight computer to do the actual correction so I've got to plot that now to make sure we get some semblance of the right number I guess I could do that thing which is most dangerous in in Kerbal Space Program and that is to trust Megjet to do the maneuver could we do that Let's see if MechJab is greater than Flight Computer. Flight Computer definitely won't be able to do this right. I don't trust it at all. Okay, let's try this. And maneuver planner, I guess. Yeah, execute next node. Let me continue drifting towards the program marker first. Okay, I'm gonna let it uh, take over and let's see what happens. I have no idea what's gonna happen now. Okay, it's got it ignited. And that's right and proper. Yep. And let me take the liberty of time warping so that it doesn't wiggle around. Okay, so, well let's see if this is the right height. And uh, we should uh, just stick here. We don't need to turn it all in order to uh, get retrograde on the other side. There is another issue. I don't know where the where the oceans, if you will, of Venus are, if there are any in this case. I assume there are. And uh, if, like Eve, those oceans are going to be problematic to us. Okay, we've lost connection. It, it doesn't matter. We were going to just coast through and head back on out. The question is whether this height is a good height for this sort of thing, and right now my conclusion is no. We need to get it a little bit lower, which is going to be a minor ordeal, because we have to turn the craft around again. So we're going up again, and that altitude did not do so much. So we're going to have to plan another maneuver to bring us down slightly lower, but let's not overdo things. Let's go to 283, I think that's fine. Try that out.
So there is, of course, uh, a material difference between MechJeb and the flight computer in that MechJeb seems to be able to execute the stuff immediately. But that's not really the thing that is uh, interesting me. Uh, the reason I'm switching to Maneuver Planner is because Flight Computer doesn't seem to be able to do the, modes, uh, the nodes properly in the first place. Um, if I install a computer system on a probe, I want it to be able to interpret this maneuver as what I want to do. And whatever it is that this throttle and uh, time thing is, that's not what I'm interested in. It, this is this does not work right and I'm just going to program the onboard computer to understand this input okay I mean it's as simple as that I will uh, get some decent programmers to put a decent decent control module on all of my probes Alright, so that is my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay, we've got connection back in time, that's good. It should be noted that uh, part of the reason I wanted to turn back to Earth and uh, take care of our communication system is because of course it's not perfect right now. So, I've uh, given the RCS activation command. And here I'm going to give the RCS uh, no more luck command because what's going to happen is probably uh, Smart ASS or Maneuver Planner will, will make a mess of things. But it will allow the craft to coast to the right position, so that will be good enough. Oh, now it's working a little bit more robustly. That's nice to see. Yeah, yeah, so finally, uh, MechJeb seems to have its act together. That's nice to, that's nice to know. Good. I don't know why it was just uh, burning a ton of RCS for no reason before. it didn't execute it because it couldn't reach the node marker? Is that right? Huh. Nope, oh, no, there it goes. 265, huh. Okay, well, we'll go with that. <laughs> 254 now, that might be a little bit too much. But that's what we're testing here. So let's find out. After all, for the record, the actual history of probes to Venus has been one fraught with many, many failures along the way and this is only my second one so I think I think I can be forgiven for having a few failures before I get it right okay atmosphere is forcing us retrograde good Let's see what kind of heat we're generating here uh, so far none negative 39, 38 degrees Celsius. But uh, of more concern is actually whether our apoapsis will dip too much and end up leading to a crash. That is a possibility here. Hmm, we've got a bit of a rotation. Approaching periapsis, we are at 1 degree Celsius, very mild, heading uh, 9,400 meters per second. Again, the goal is to get an apoapsis, let's say, above 600 kilometers.
and uh, probably no more than 2,000. I think we can go around again. So uh, no changes to our orbit will uh, will hit this altitude again. Uh, heat does not seem to be a problem. Before we reach apoapsis, I'm going to uh, give the signal to extend solar pan. Oops, not what I wanted to do. Extend solar panels. Oh, uh, well, I'll have to wait till we get some sort of connection. Uh, because you know, just to uh, charge up a bit while we are on our way out. We've got about four days worth of electricity on board, so no, no biggie. Our orbital period is eight hours. Okay, so hitting the atmosphere one more time. Hopefully not too hard. Okay, approaching periapsis again, and looking about the same. No fireworks. Don't know if this is going to be enough to bring the apoapsis down, or if it's going to be too much just yet. It's really all down to the last bit of the orbit, and can't really tell when we're still this far away from periapsis. Good thing I packed a lot of electric charge this, this time, so that's a plus. Okay, I'm going to clear it to go around one more time, hitting the atmosphere again, same altitude, and uh, we, we won't have to extend panels, I don't think. We can uh, just go around. Okay, I'd say third time's the charm, but I don't know whether to count this as the third time or the fourth time. This will be our fourth time entering the atmosphere, though the third time doing that after deciding a change in mission mode. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this sort of uh, repeated aero braking has been done before after aero capture. It is uh, nice and safe after all, so I'm sure it'll be used in the future as well going around the planet. Of course, this wasn't quite planned by me, which is the difference. I'm just sort of winging it and seeing what works. And unwilling to go through the rigmarole of uh, doing another burn at, at Apoapsis. So just trying to stick to this orbit and or this periapsis and trying to break using it. But uh, it's gonna be diminishing returns in terms of how much it lowers the apoapsis. The faster you go through the atmosphere the more it breaks you. Uh, well, okay, uh, taking it both ways, uh, breaking as in B-R-E-A-K as well as B-R-A-K-E, but um, yeah We'll see, we're going back up again. Still not as as low as I'd like. Let me, well we don't have any connection now. I was thinking about doing a retro burn here, but since we don't have connection there's no point trying. So the way I figure it is this. Uh, probably the optimal entry into uh, Venus, uh, initial entry, would probably be around somewhere between 220 and 250. Uh, right where it, the highest periapsis that would get us captured by Venus. And it should be around there somewhere. And then once we've got that, once we get captured, we'll just keep that periapsis, and I'm talking about a future mission, keep that periapsis, and on the second go around it'll break further and on the third go round there'll be more ale breaking and so forth and just sort of figure it out from there but uh, yeah I think the approach has to be between 220 and 250 would be best and maybe a little bit uh, if we've got that right if we can air break at that altitude and just rely on that then we can ditch the service module have a 
have a heat shield here instead and maybe some sort of forward shielding to protect the solar panels that we lost or something like that and you know maybe more of a container for all of this instead of having it all out in the open and then maybe maybe we'll be able to do it properly uh, as was noted of course we'll have to have some sort of always on antenna instead of something that might snap in the atmosphere on the lander portion so that's another adjustment that will have to be made okay uh, going back up again so I mean we're still not in in a situation where we can try and force the issue if uh, you take a look here if we tried to just burn to bring it down assuming we had connection here you can see it take more than a thousand meters per second so we have to uh, rely on Venus's goodwill here and one more time hit it back up now and uh, yep I think I'm going to have to hold off on the whole restructuring of my commsat system and uh, wait till another uh, the next episode for that because this is taking a lot longer real time than it might even seem in the video so yeah I'm gonna have to uh, I hope I keep this video short because this is a little bit tedious and otherwise we'll have to do the commsat stuff in the next episode and I'm going to try and get some geostationary sats up so there will be launches in that episode along with whatever deorbiting I can do so we'll be launching stuff deorbiting stuff and you know uh, maybe I'll contemplate this is uh, 23.5 uh, I don't know where the claw is is the thing. If we had the claw then I'd be able to clear up some extra debris that might not be able to deorbit on its own. We'll see. We'll see what we can do about that. If anybody actually knows where the claw ends up in this a particular version of a realistic progression light tech tree uh, this is uh, number 18 the version and that would be nice to know so that I can unlock that uh, that technology if I haven't already I haven't really paid attention to the claw just yet because well it doesn't really come into play in any of our missions okay continuing on Now, what you might be wondering at this point is whether this is really the best way to go about things, going around the planet repeatedly, and and I would have to say best is a strong word for it. It is, uh, it is the safest thing I can think of right now, and uh, you might also wonder maybe the periapsis could go down a bit. But I would like to remind you that uh, it seems like any burn I try and do at apoapsis to adjust the periapsis seems to uh, seems to have unpredictable results. I could use maneuver planner, but even it would have to be making an adjustment about 0.1 meter per second or 0.2 meter per second. You'll note the tolerance here, and I'm not too sure it can do much better than 0.1 meter per second anyway. So, so safest probably not the best it is at least safe in that I can uh, see predictable results from each pass which is important so I have reasonable reasonable faith that I'm not going to end up with an apoapsis that is going to crash me into Venus on this pass and that's a good thing to know. Very important piece of information, that.
So now it gets tough. Now I have to decide whether to allow another pass, for instance, lift the periapsis a little bit more, in which case I might be going around a few more times. I want to land on Venus. Let's. I, I want this to work out, and I'm doing everything I can to make sure it does. And that, in this case, means being very, very careful about a number of things. Especially since our, uh, our ability to do any burn is a little bit suspect. Half of the fuel that uh, would be required for any burn will actually go into using the RCS to turn the craft. Which is annoying. It would be a little bit lighter if I could ditch the service module. But on our final descent I'm still thinking that the heat is going to be very high, in which case I want this to be around to uh, suffer that heat. Uh, these lander legs might end up end up exploding. I'm uh, anticipating that. In fact, uh, frankly, if everything up till here explodes, uh, I would still consider it a success. Uh, that's, that's the situation. We're still good as long as we've got the electric charge up here. We've even got solar panels remaining. And of course we've got the all-important dish and the experiments. Uh, we didn't put any experiments below this line. So all of this can explode and we will still be fine. Okay, so... So I'm probably going to end up lifting my orbit a little bit for the next pass. I've just realized that my peculiar connection issues might lead to some unpredictable results here. And that... In that I uh, don't always know whether I'll have connection once we reach apoapsis. So, that, that, that is somewhat unpredictable. Okay, we're nine minutes before the maneuver node. As long as we burn in this direction, it should be alright. So I'm going to let, let the hated flight computer try this out. It's not a huge burn. And pointing in this direction should mean that we end up a little bit less uh, so uh, less of an effect. So right now I'm lifting it to 266 kilometers so maybe because we're not pointing at the maneuver node we end up at 260 instead. So uh, that's that's fine as long as it's not completely opposite. So let's go for that. And then we'll see where we're at and adjust accordingly afterwards. Yeah, 266. Good enough. Okay, good. Didn't need to turn around. The key thing was I didn't want to have to turn around. We did the burn a little bit ahead of apoapsis, and that's because I wanted to get the periapsis more on this side, uh, so that it would still be where we have line of sight with the, with the mission control. Okay, well, uh, 266. I'll go with that. Let's hope that's safe enough. This is the critical one. If we end up too too far into the atmosphere, we could be done for. Otherwise, we'll be fine. Unless we can't communicate with mission control on this side. Yeah, yeah. That would also be a problem. Got three days worth of electric charge left. Okay, I've, I've lost count how many times we've uh, gone into Venus's atmosphere. Uh, we still have connection right now, as intended. That's why 
did the burn where I did it, uh, though we're probably going to soon lose it, and so I, I can't really plan too much here. All sorts of nervousness. Ah, lost connection there. All right. Well, we just get to watch. Okay. Well, that was nice and gentle, though. Probably not as much as we needed. But patience, patience, people. If uh, if I end up failing this mission, it will not be for want of patience. All right, uh, one more time. Someone had asked me which which of my series or which sort of mission was the most fun, like uh, was it uh, the Realism Overhaul series, the EDB Mission Control, the EDB Aerospace, uh, which, or the stock missions, you know, which which is the most fun? And the short answer is, I've decided, uh, it's the one where I have to cut the least out of the videos. Because, if you figure it, uh, the parts that I cut out of the videos, uh, those are the parts that are boring. <laughs> right? They are the slow parts, the parts where I'm not doing any talking and it's very tedious, uh, you know, arranging maneuver nodes and that sort of thing, or or like this, going around the planet repeatedly, um, and time warping constantly. Yeah, the the one the missions that have the least of that are are the most entertaining to me. And uh, I think that that's, that's pretty much a good barometer. If I end up cutting out a, a third of my play time, that's pretty normal. If I end up cutting out, you know, two thirds or more, that's that's when it gets a little bit. Uh, even over a half of the play time, that's those are the more boring missions that were a little bit more tedious. Doesn't mean I uh, don't enjoy the effect. So the the journey, if you will is very difficult and tedious but uh, but the satisfaction at the end the end result for instance if I manage to get this safely onto the surface of Venus uh, could be well worth the the process so there is that side of things too sometimes you're willing to uh, put up with a little bit of boredom in exchange for a lot of satisfaction at the end And uh, it looks like after this pass, I'm going to have to uh, look into uh, just uh, doing the burn. I've already transferred all the fuel into the bottom tank, so I'll be able to use the... I, I debated whether to use these little one kilonewton rockets uh, thrusters in order to do the, do the adjustment burns and uh, bring the bring the periapsis up first and then the apoapsis down using using our fuel. Uh, but I think it'll be better to just use uh, this engine. It's got uh, it's got the relights so that's fine and besides that uh, it's any efficiency that they might have well, there's no real efficiency it's just a matter of being able to burn a uh, small burn effectively so uh, that's why I was thinking of using those because they're only one kilonewton each. There's four of them, and uh, and they'd be able to do it more precisely. But I'm relying on the computers anyway, and uh, the fact that these are angled outwards and we'll have to be carrying the whole thing anyway. Uh, it's not like we can ditch this part just yet because of the heat shielding thing. So, so yeah, we've just transferred all the fuel into this tank. Everything including the fuel from up here except for the electric charge uh, I actually you know what uh, now that I look at we can transfer the electric charge up like this just to make sure that as much as possible is up here 
Okay, so uh, on the next pass, we're going to be uh, doing the burns and trying to get down properly. You've got 767 meters per second to use. Uh, it might be a little bit tricky. It's mainly tricky because of this horizon issue and where to do the burns. So let me arrange the burns first and then I'll, I'll come back to you. Okay, it's a bit dicey, but this is what I've come up with. Uh, so first, uh, burn here at apoapsis to lift up my periapsis uh, well outside the atmosphere to 815 kilometers. Uh, that'll be 136 meters per second. And then uh, maneuver at apoapsis to pull, uh, well, uh, at periapsis technically, to pull our apoapsis down so that it becomes our periapsis. And I have that at 264 kilometers. Uh, the hope is that then that'll be enough to bring this down and we will land somewhere on this side. If we don't, that's going to be a problem. If for some reason the drag on this side has enough of effect that we end up not getting over to the side that is facing Earth, that's going to be a problem. I'm hoping that uh, having this at 815 is high enough so that we're not going to encounter that kind of drag before we hit periapsis. I also hope that this is enough drag, uh, that it is low enough to bring our periapsis down into the atmosphere, at which point uh, the whole long trip along this side of the planet should bring us down to the surface. This is all tricky. Uh, obviously this is as far as I could place it as long as we want to uh, have the signal sent in line of sight with Earth. Yeah, we're just going to have to try it. I, I could probably... I'm running out of time here too, so that's a little bit of a problem. Alright, so continuing on out of the atmosphere. The atmosphere, incidentally, uh, where time warping changes to physical time warp is 540 kilometers for future reference. This is again lifting our periapsis. Oh, it's drifting a bit. That's not good. I did not expect it to drift for any reason. And there's no way for me to control that now except maybe Smart ASS and RCS, but it takes some time to burn the R uh, open the RCS. Um, you know what? That's, that's an okay altitude. I will... hmm... maybe, maybe we should try a little bit closer. How? No, I'm gonna say that's an okay altitude. Okay, now. Alright, our signals are away. Let's just hope it follows them. I've given it uh, quite a lot of time to make sure it hits that maneuver node. Oh, I, I'm, I didn't account for the signal delay properly when I sent that signal for the burn. That's silly. I should have sent it right away. Or close to right away. I must be getting a little bit tired at this point. And as I've said, my, my time here is running out. I'll probably actually have to bring it into the atmosphere after I get the day's activities through. I'll try and do that before... I mean, I'll get that done in the episode, obviously. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of my own little scheduling. Okay, I'm uh, really sick and tired of its inability to just get to that maneuver node right there. Hello? I've, I've given you all the RCS in the world and you can't get there? It's crazy. Don't tell me that flight computer is somehow making sense with this. I'm not going to listen to that. Okay, I know I got the, the, the burn wrong, but it should be able to get to the maneuver node. 
there's nothing, there's no smart ASS or anything going on here. Uh, it should be able to get to that maneuver node without any problems. That's just its own stupidity. Here it goes again. Even with the gimbling of the engine, it can't quite get there, huh? I mean, retrograde, here. That's where I want it to be, but no. Right now we have no connection, which was as expected, actually. Like I said, this was the furthest point that I could execute this maneuver. Ah, it's gonna end up too high. And with not enough fuel. Oh no, it's alright. Okay, now it's going too far. Okay, too far. No more fuel. Well, let's see what happens. <laughs> what can we do? Uh, it's over here now. Okay, uh, uh, once we get connection, I'm gonna have to turn RCS off just so I don't have that sound effect. Alright, is all of that uh, patient arrow breaking worthwhile, or does it turn out to be entirely futile? We are going in the wrong way. Ah, crud. Uh, <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. I didn't have enough RCS left to turn us the right way around. Still have no connection. Hmm. Yeah, I thought I'd have some left over, but that RCS constantly burning and getting the craft nowhere ended up uh, using all of the fuel. Well, except for a tiny little bit of MMH that was left over because there was an imbalance. Well, maybe it'll be alright. We'll see. Seems to be turning to the right direction, but it could just keep on spinning at this rate. I don't know how it's managing to look like it's turning towards the retrograde vector, but so far, so good. And we have connection, and so as long as we get down on this side of the planet, we'll be good on that score. We are now below 300 kilometers in altitude. One downside to all this is, of course, that we are landing on the dark side of the planet. So, yep, no, uh, no real great visuals except the ones we uh, have some flame effects. Uh, let's keep an eye on our our engine to see the temperature. Remember on my initial mission, I actually was at about 120 kilometers or something like that on the periapsis, so uh, all the explosions and such that we saw on that mission were not necessarily in that territory yet. Maybe, maybe not. I forget exactly where the explosions started occurring. Uh, now in serious temperature mode, 240 degrees Celsius. And also serious G-forces, uh, approaching 3 Gs now. I would like both of those to stabilize somewhat. Oh, okay, something blew up. 
We'll just wait until the end to find out what. Uh, looks like whatever blew up, it's led to some cooling briefly. Um, maybe an RCS port? Those are always trouble. Okay, about 4 Gs, now declining. Oh no, is it increasing a little bit? Maybe. 5 Gs, yeah, it's increasing. Temperature is decreasing though. Funny, because I believe the surface temperature of Venus is probably higher than that. So, a bit unexpected. I want to work on the temperature profile of this planet. Though again, maybe our spinning might be dissipating something or another. Acceleration going down. Our terminal velocity. Oh, lots of spinning now. That's unnecessary. Why is it doing that? still told it to hold retrograde. Don't know why it's spinning so much. Uh, maybe if I get out of time more, but then again could use the parachutes. Terminal velocity is actually well, uncertain. Okay, well uh, I think we can safely decouple the service module. That was just to keep us cool and yeah I think it's succeeded okay I've got that signal and uh, we can uh, throw out the landing gear as well aha science we have observed the goo in E slash Venus's upper atmosphere uh, yeah, transmit. Let's hope uh, our electric charge isn't too, uh, too taxed by that. Uh, okay, can't really see what's going on. I guess we don't need far. We know. Atmosphere is thick. Got it. Uh, 78 science added. Done. Yes. Okay, we, we could probably do a lower atmosphere, but we've only got two goo containers, so... Let me just turn on the lights briefly to check what other experiments we could do. Okay, let's see if it can decouple this. Finally. Okay. And its orientation seems to be... Okay, and the landing gear is out, but it still seems a bit lopsided on its orientation. I don't know why. Parachute deployment failed. Too high. Well, the parachute I should have said for pressure, because we definitely have enough pressure for it. Ah, uh, heck. Well, if it's not going to open now, I'll just uh, hope for the best as we touch down. Alright, so where are we? Okay, so we're, we're pretty far south compared to our, our previous landing. It's okay. All right, well, I'll uh, come back to you once we get closer to the surface. We're a long way off still, and uh, our vertical speed is de, uh, well, de-accelerating, decelerating. So we've got a long time ahead of us. All right, so uh, I'm going to go read something. Okay, so hello again, and as you can see, I've uh, skipped quite a lot of this because it was just tedious but now I'm not entirely sure where the surface is so let's get surface info um, alright so, so we're basically above water aren't we or uh, whatever liquid uh, maybe a slight terrain actually uh, looks like about a hundred or so meters maybe terrain then just keep the position up. Yeah. Raw biome. Nothing. So, no biome indication, of course. No, I wanted that. OK, 
Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, it looks like parachutes are deployed. Yeah, uh, and they're sort of at this angle. Well, does that mean that they'll gonna, they are going to pull us that ways? Maybe? Well, let's time warp a little bit. Sure doesn't seem like they're doing much at all. Even in terms of slowing us down. How strange. But then again, they're not fully deployed yet, so that's that's an important point. Okay, well, it's still sort of tilted like this, so I'm going to I'm going to hedge my bets a little bit. I'm gonna do the the barometer reading and the thermometer reading here. We'll still have some. Oh, why don't we have a little timer thing on them? Anyway, uh, that'll still give us some science if uh, if it so happens that we hit the surface in a bad way. So, just waiting for these to fulfill themselves. Okay, here we go. Flying at Eve. 72 points of science worth 86% if we transmit it. In fact, nothing more if we recover it, so let's transmit that. And uh, temperature scan, 48 points, transmit that. Okay, we got all of that. So that's good. We're not going to come away from this without something. Okay, here we go. Uh, 1,000 meters and descending crunch time. We we hope not actually, but uh, certainly. Oh, there's the parachutes, and it's having an effect of our on our. Yes, our our attitude is correcting. Very good. Unfortunately, our descent rate is like barely anything at all now. Ah, uh, it's gonna be a long way down. But I, I'm sure the parachutes were set to deploy at 500 meters above the actual ground. Or is, or is it 750 with uh, real shoots? Uh, could be a while. So we're talking about... Without, without time warp, it's about 20 minutes, 15-20 minutes. So 5 to 8 minutes. Thereabouts. Anyway, pressure 88 times normal atmospheric pressure on Earth. We've been here before though, so no big surprises. Uh, thankfully not crushing our probe like a tin can as would actually happen. Alright, so I'll be back with you once we uh, touch down here. It's gonna be a while. I think we can redo the temperature and gravioli and such, right? So, I'm gonna quickly sneak in a log gravity data. I don't know if uh, we, we're going to do it in time. That's the only one that uh, we might need to try and do. But uh, here we are, 45 meters above the ground, descending at a rate of uh, half a meter a second or thereabouts. Certainly a very gentle landing. You might wonder why I didn't just uh, release the parachutes once this was upright, and of course that was because A, I wanted the line to be gentle, but B, uh, if I tried to just uh, release the parachutes, uh, chances are this would probably be toppling again uh, as it was before I deployed the parachutes. So, so we have it like this, altitude 14, 13, 12, 11. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, whoop, okay, well, so much for that estimate. Uh, we seem to be on the ground, sort of, yeah, okay, good. 
While Gravioli Data will uh, record what the ground is anyway, I'm gonna log seismic, gonna have the pressure data, gonna have the temperature, gonna do the science junior, gonna do the mystery goose. So, here we are! We have managed to successfully land on the surface of Venus intentionally, finally. And uh, yeah, not quite the original mission mode, but but successful anyway. Just waiting for all this to to happen. Okay, here we go. All right, gravity scan from the surface. Transmit data. Uh, it's doing a piecemeal again. Electric charge seems fine. Okay, that's that's done. Next. The rest should come pretty quickly together because uh, I set the gravioli to do it in midair but the rest are a little bit more proximal to each other though my uh, time delay seems to be quite long now signal delay I should say okay uh, transmit the seismic scan data get 96% of that and that's a lot of points too. We'll wait until that's actually fully sent before I do any of the others. Okay, hopefully that's all of it. So Mystery Goo 104 from the surface of Eve slash Venus. Transmit. Yeah. Okay, 104 science done. Atmospheric pressure scan from the surface, very important. Done. Temperature scan, 64 points. Done. And material study, 256 points, worth 91%. What's the point of recovering this stuff if uh, if we get so many points for just uh, transmitting it? Seems like maybe there's a mistake there, but maybe it's because it's EVE? Uh, now this is for a Duna high orbit, so it's not going to help to gather data or do any experiments from here. So I think we're done. I think that is all of the science spoken for, and uh, we can... Just, uh, well, maybe we shouldn't, well, there's really no hope that this would communicate with anything else anyway. So, yeah, we'll turn on the lights and let it, uh, oh, and I guess we can extend the solar panels just in case it ever gets into, into daylight. Alright, so, uh, there you have it. This is the successful Venus 2 mission at long last after quite a long long drag here uh, we finally managed to get to the surface successfully and transmit our science so so yeah we'll have to look forward to uh, fixing up our communication system in the next episode thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please do press like if you have any comments suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time